Hello, everyone, and welcome to the STL Tech Talk Podcast. My name is JJ Ham, and we have another great show for you. Are you ready for the top tech news stories of the week? Apps you should download, awesome interviews, fun and lively commentary on technology, and, of course, our very special guest interviews. Our first guest is the brand manager of Unidev. She creates innovative content, including video, exclusive interviews, surveys, promotions, as well as host events both in office and off-site. Ten plus years of screenwriting, event production, and all sorts of cool stuff like Comedy Central, Fox Television. That's hot. Her writing skills <laughs> have been featured in a live magazine, St. Louis Fringe Festival, and Improv Olympic. And uh, she serves on the board of the American Marketing Association as the VP of PR and Outreach. Say hello to my BFF, Angela LaRocca. Thanks for being on the show. Well, thanks for having me, JJ. <laughs> That's quite the intro. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love for that. You definitely deserve it. <laughs> Our next guest, as you can tell, there's more than one, is currently a project and resource manager at Unidev. He is responsible for the coordination with client and management of developers to complete successful projects that accomplish the client's goals. He works on a wide variety of technological projects in the B2C and B2B sectors, including web development, web design, web content strategy, custom software development, mobile applications, and e-commerce development. An actor as well. Say hello, Pat Nade. Hey, JJ. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for being on the show, sir. It's our pleasure. However, this show is not complete without my good friend, founder, editor-in-chief of STLTechTalk.com, producer of CodeCast by STL Tech Talk, and co-creator of STLTechChic.com, our women in tech site. Say hello to the uncanny Kevin Harvell. Good evening, world. <laughs> there you go. So... Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at STL Tech Talk, Facebook, Google+, Instagram, Tumblr, frankly, anywhere. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Subscribe to our shows, our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, STL Tech Talk, Windows Phone 8 app, and Windows 8 app, or listen directly from our website. Visit stltechtalk.com to keep up with our tech news, podcasts, codecast, programming code, hands-on reviews, event coverage, and much, much more. And don't forget, you can interact with the show by sending us feedback to podcast at stltechtalk.com. And if you're watching us live, you can ask us questions via the chat room, and we will do our best to answer those questions in a timely manner. Special thank yous go out tonight from JJ and Kevin to, I'm going to say this wrong, but it's Glamazzini. Glamazzini. Glamazzini, I got it right the third time. Lakeisha Brown, Tomiko Killer, Ruby Agent, Brad Urani. Man, I love you, dude. Death Cake Podcast. It's, I know it sounds gruesome, but it's actually kind of cool. And Jennifer C. She works for the, uh, the Net Impact, I believe. Just for being awesome people and supporting the show in one way or another. So thank you. Also, I want to take a moment to thank the sponsors of the show, Heartland Realty. Go to heartlandhomesrealty.com for all your real estate needs. And guess what? Unidev. If you dream it, they can build it. Custom software, end-to-end -end development, beautiful web design, and creating marketing solutions. They've been in business for the last 25 years with 200-plus customers, 24-7 support. You will not be let down or left out in the creation of your dreams. If you want software development, content management, mobile development, web design, e-commerce solutions, digital marketing, and hosting, go to our website, click on their banner, or go to unidev.com and get the high-quality service you deserve today. So let's go ahead and start off with our first interview <laughs> guest. And uh, let's just go ahead and kick it off to my BFF. I'm sorry, Pat, but I'm playing favorites tonight. What got you, <laughs> what, what got you in the technological sector? You know, um, getting hired at Unida was my first full-on jump into the, the tech world. I come from a production background. I was a television major, so writing and producing and just sort of seeing the big picture was always something I liked and breaking it down and figuring out how do I mechanically get there was something I was always passionate about. What was it like going at this, Angela? Let's just pick up where we left off. What was it like going into this sure. field, not having any really just, it sounds like you didn't have a lot of knowledge, um, which, okay. you know, to a novice can be very overwhelming, but it seems, I mean, not seems, but you do a phenomenal job. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. Honestly, it's very much jump in and just do it. 
Um, there is a lot of training, and that's what I like about Unidev is that there's always great tools. They certainly set you up for success. You can listen to webinars. You go to trainings, conferences, classes, things like that. But in such an evolving industry, you have to keep up. So it's kind of like no matter what, it's you're jumping into something that's always in motion. So you just have to jump on and start taking everything in and, and don't stop. Awesome. Also, so as brand manager for Unidev, what what are some of the things, your responsibilities that you are in charge of at Unidev? Wow. Um, I have to say I have the most fun job I could have ever dreamt of. Um, and we just sort of created this position around my love of people and being out in the public and getting involved and really talking up something that I believe in. And um, so I host events, and it's been great to have your support on those. I host m monthly events at our office. I get out and speak in the public quite a bit. Um, I work on our social media, and it's just my job is to be the walking, talking billboard for Unidev. So if people <laughs> hear, why are you laughing? Is that no. funny? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I'll, I'll be the first to admit I believe you do a wonderful job as a walking billboard for Unidev. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Um, and then also video is something. Like I said, I come from a production background, so being able to to bring that into the workplace and just bring some life and something extra creative and different into our workplace is really a blessing. And so Pat and I are having a blast, kind of cranking out videos. We're shooting one in two days. So Awesome. Looking Very forward excited. to it. Yeah. So, so Pat, tell us a little bit about your... Um, technological past? I mean, did, were you always a developer, or when did you get into it? Tell us your story. No, I've, I've actually, so I'm actually coming from a non-technical background. I have, I have uh, kind of education and, and management and things like that, but I've always been interested in technology. You know, like, my dad had the old MS-DOS, you know, floppy disk load computer, and I, nice. like, the earliest memories of, you know, <laughs> ending command prompts and loading up, like, Sesame Street typing games. Uh, it's pretty, pretty solid. Uh, but yeah, I've always been into like technology and, and gadgets and video games and all that stuff. So I just kind of uh, enjoy the way that world works and how fast it moves and changes. So um, yeah, once I kind of found my way to Unidev, uh, yeah, I've started to pick up a lot more and more of the uh, actual, you know, how, how this stuff gets made. And uh, I studied a little bit of computer science in college and, and just, I love it. You know, I've just always been a, a fan of it. So it's great that I get to apply my project management kind of training to, to a field that I find just fascinating, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I also, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's so much you can do with technology. I mean, there's really, it, it feels a little limitless, especially when you think about, you know, the, this, the cyberspace in general and databases, how large uh, things are and how we're able to push so much to, to such small uh, technology. But so let's go into what, what, what did you have to learn really quickly? Because um, it sounds like you both had to kind of learn things really quickly. What, what experience did you have to learn or, or what skill did you have to learn very quickly to get where you are? Well, I'll start. Um, I, I, one big thing that really stood out to me was, was learning to admit when you don't know something. I think it's in oh, technology. Sure. It's very much like, uh, you know, you just want to Google it, find, figure it out on your own, things like that. But I found that uh, I'm most successful and developers are more successful when they, they um, you know, ask questions, ask for help, get to the root of the problem instead of just kind of blindly trudging ahead into a dead end or following something that you think the customer wants because they asked for it. But you start asking questions, you realize, oh, they don't really... They say they want that, but what they really want, they're just really trying to accomplish some goal, and there's probably a better solution. Uh, and if there is, we should offer that versus just blindly following what they say. So I've learned asking a lot of questions and really getting to the root of the matter is, is the best way to get creative and find good solutions. Never give up, never surrender. <laughs> All right. <laughs> An Angela, you're up. What did what did you? I mean, especially you. What did what did you have to really? Because I mean, you gotta you gotta do a lot as far as like when some people are talking to you, right? Um, so what was the what was one of your biggest challenges? Um, I would say kind of like Pat said, jumping into a place where you are just in unfamiliar territory and being okay with that. It's incredibly humbling. Um, just learning about, I mean, SEO. You're not going to learn that overnight. So really right. sort of seeing a big picture of something that's really crucial to my job 
and breaking that down and thinking, okay, what elements do I need to learn? How do I go about doing that? But to take off the pressure to learn it all so fast. Because that's how I, I felt a little in the beginning. I just felt like, oh my gosh, I need to keep up with these people. I work around these geniuses and I'm <laughs> not there. And it was, it was a little bit of, of that happening. But just sort of letting go and we're all human and we learn you know, things one at a time. Hey, I've met the worker bees at Unidev. It's uh, they're they're extremely smart and, and talented. They're they're talented and very smart. Um, great great people. Um, they actually uh, had conversations with me, which is a plus. Um, you know, you don't really walk up and they're like, oh god, you know, um, like other companies. I've been to. Anyways, but yeah, so uh, that that's another thing too. And in, in this in this business and technology. Um, it can seem a little overwhelming, but it's also if you embrace that limitlessness of it, I guess, there's really no end to it, right? Like, you're like, holy cow, I had no idea. Like, so even if you did know SEO, there's stuff that I didn't know about SEO that I actually learned a couple of days ago because there's just, there's so many different offshoots and so many different things that are, people are using these tools for to accomplish a task. So that's, that, that's pretty crazy. Um, so... What, why did you, uh, Pat, why did you go ahead and decide to pursue a career in technology? Did, uh, did somebody convince you of that, or was that just where you wanted to be? <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, I, it is kind of a place I wanted to be in, and it kind of touches on what you were just getting at, JJ, like the, the lifelong learning aspect of it. It's, it's, you're never going to figure technology out. You know, it's, it's changing so fast. And I've always enjoyed learning new things and and solving new problems, you know. So, so I, I wanted to get into something that was gonna keep me changing and keep keep new challenges coming. So, uh, yeah, and it, it's it's totally come true. It's it's there's new problems that solve every single day, and I love that about it. And I'm glad. I know in in a year from now we're gonna be working on totally different things, and, and that's exciting to me. So that's that's why I'm I'm into technology right now for sure. Angela, I I know we're super. We get we so Angela and I took a picture in front of like superhero things and we totally were rocking it out. I'm gonna I'm gonna share that out on our site because it Good. is it is Monday. it is sizzling. Uh, but <laughs> for you, so uh, what what continues to drive you know what what continues to kind of push you forward as far as um, technology? I mean, would you say that um, you're you feel good here? You could see yourself uh, continuing this, um, uh, you know, learning more about technology, learning how it integrates and all this kind of stuff. Absolutely, and I think uh, for me it was embracing my inner geek. Uh, All right. As I've heard several times <laughs> before. Right. You but have then, to. Yeah. You do. You gotta love yeah. it. We're all geeks to the core. But um, I just I really like the pace and the adrenaline, and that it is oh, yeah. so different. The industry changes every day, but that's what I like about. It. I think both of our jobs. It's never the same thing every day, and it's just it's exciting and it's fun. And when you work around good people, and when you're in a supportive environment, I just think everything can fall into place and really set you up to be successful. Well, speaking of that and to that point, what are you guys doing today? So what are you doing now at Unidev? <laughs> what are we doing right now? Well, we're sort of just kicking off our exciting new co-brand. We have merged, if you've seen in our video, um, Unidev and the Net Impact have joined forces and we basically want to really nail down and excel in you know a few different fields and really just work at those. You don't need to be all things to all people. We just really stand out at things like, you know, web design and mobile apps or what else do we do, Pat? Yeah, yeah. I mean and there's always uh, new stuff coming in. But yeah, trying trying to push forward on, on those key pieces, you know, um, you know, e-commerce platforms. We've got a, a lot of new sites coming up. We launched, I think, like three or four sites last month. So yeah. a lot of volume on that front. And then, you know, working on mobile apps and some really cool stuff integrated with special hardware. You know, doing that really custom stuff as well. So, so we've got uh, we've got all all cylinders churning right now. But we're trying to follow where where the need is and where there's demand and, and really uh, you know sharpen our tools in that in that front. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been very exciting. A lot of uh, a lot of new stuff happening. It's a good Absolutely. new energy kind of approaching people with the whole you know we listen, we partner, we deliver. Oh it's my shirt, cool. Angela! Yeah. Oh my God! Ah, my shirt! It's in the other room. I'm so sorry. It's all about 
It's all about you. I forgot. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm. You know, I'm representing because it's, it's all about you. Uh, I'll. I'll wear. I can, now I'll wear it for a week because uh, you know I didn't show oh, up to the show. Definitely and, wear it for a week. I didn't show up for a show, and then I didn't, it's a whole thing. I should have wore it tonight. God. Anyway, so um. No, but that's our philosophy. It is. It's, yeah. It's all about you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think that really works well. And, and I talk about you guys a lot. I've talked about you guys uh, constantly since a after we met and ever since then because I, I believe that you're the best place to go to uh, for these services. Um, so let's talk about a little bit more. What product successes can you share with us tonight and let our audience know about um, that you guys have done at Unity? Yeah, in terms of uh, specific products, the one the one that's that's kind of our flagship, the one we're most proud of, uh, is, is the Octori content management system. So that's uh, the fully featured CMS. It's it's been out for almost five years now, I think. Um, we've got uh, over 200 customers running sites on it right now. We're always awesome. making enhancements to it. Um, we're developing some really cool uh, capabilities uh, with mobile and things like that within it. Um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a great platform, you know. Um, Obviously, it's always a, again, it is you know, back to the all about you thing. We always kind of make a judgment call. We'll work with a lot of different CMSs, but but uh, it's been a great solution for a lot of people. So so we're really happy with that that platform. Um, and you may have heard Andrea talk about that, I think, on the last podcast. I mean, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's her baby. Yeah. Behind <laughs> that for sure. But really, we just kicked it up, like Pat said, with going mobile. And there's just some really unique features that are going to be launching on this new mobile CMS platform really soon. So we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I'm excited to ask you some questions about that in the future. But I'm going to let Kevin talk a little bit for a moment. Oh, my gosh. I am still here. That's right. <laughs> it's good to see wow. you, Kevin. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I just I got in. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you, know, you mentioned a little while ago about approaching and how you approach people. Speaking of projects, how do you guys at Unidev approach products? Or project, sorry, from from Angela, your perspective, and then uh, Pat, follow up from your perspective. We basically, like I said, embrace the term "it's all about you." Um, mm -hmm. We've had a few, few people approach us and think, "Are you too big for me?" And you know, "Are you too small for my business?" Perhaps, but we really sure. see every client as, "Okay, what is it that we can do for you?" We want to fight crime. We want to be your solution. And it's not a, a one and done, okay, you know, there's you need a website, there's your website, we're finished. Um, we really work to develop that long term relationship. We that's why, you know, partnership is so important to us. Um, but we really do we listen to what exactly you need. And if you're not sure, then we can come to that conclusion together. So there's honestly we don't put the pressure on people. We just we honestly like people so much and we work hard at that relationship. And um, I think it's it's very, very, you know, relevant in our work and things like that. And that comes from the top. I mean, mm -hmm. that comes from Greg and Steve and Andre and everybody, Mike. So. Yeah, and from from my standpoint, I, I read that question, you know, as a project manager of, you know, how do I approach a, a new project? You know, say we someone wants to work with us, uh, you know, how do we how do we get it done? And uh, from my standpoint, you have to start at at the finish line of, of where do you want to be at the end of this project? What what pain points is this solving, what goals are you accomplishing with this, and then work backwards from there in the details and things like that. I think I think too often uh, in technology it's very easy to get very like task oriented or technology oriented of okay sure. we're gonna put you in this box or we're gonna do you do this step, this step, this step. Whereas, you know, I, yeah. I think it's more effective if you start with where you wanna be and when you want to get it done by and then then you kinda have those really creative approaches of how can we accomplish that versus doing the same rubber stamp approach to every single project. Right, right, right. That's a great nice. point, Pat. And, yeah. Oh, sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Oh, I just, I like to approach clients too with where are you now, where do right. you want to be, and then how do you fit us into that mold? And it's really that simple. Yeah, you know, and, and um, the, the other thing I, I kind of wanted to toss in there too was sometimes you get, so sometimes it's hard to articulate this this message, and that's why I think, Angela, you, you being out in, in the public and, and, and making those connections is important because people can, in my experience, be completely overwhelmed and say, oh, you're, you're like, like Pat said, you're too big. You're too big of a business. That, the, and technology, it, I'm, I'm a little, you know, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, and people don't like, not knowing what they 
they're talking about. Um, right. So, th th you know, it's very difficult for them to ask the questions like, hey, I would really like to do this on my site, but I don't want to sound stupid to ask. Um, so that's why it's really it's really great that you guys approach it from the perspective of, like, let's, let's actually just have a conversation, find out exactly where you're at, like Pat said, and then figure out how to build on that and make it not overwhelming. Um, and then the big guys uh, who might say, "Well, you got, you know, do you do this?" Or you, you know, like, "Yes," and well, yes. So you, so you can speak to, <laughs> you can you can speak to both of them on that point, and 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 that's why I think it I think it works so well. Thank you. You think so? Yeah. So far, so good. <laughs> so, so what are some of the things coming up in the future? Because I mean, I know you've got an event coming up this week. Or no, it's next week, I believe. Next week. Next week. Next, next week. Next week. The twenty eighth. Uh, right. It's our speaker series. It's and I will be there. Yes. Oh, good. Okay. Bring twenty of your closest friends. That would be. Yes. <laughs> Fill the place. Fill the place up. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Again, I host those monthly speaker series events, and they've been at our office at Unidev in Chesterfield, and I like to alternate. One month I'll have someone in house speak on their field of expertise, and then other months I'll bring in people, whether it's um, one of our partners that has this great new startup or a panel of people that I just think are rock stars and they need to be sharing what they know. So this one on the 28th features Justin Miller talking about quality assurance. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs that. <laughs> Even though that's boring as all get out, it's like the most right. important thing. Yeah, it's really boring. It's it so is important. so important before <laughs> everything launches, before an email blast goes out. It has to go through that QA person. Period. You get a lot I, of clients where they just, hey, our 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 IT guy built this. He never tested it. Can you fix it? It's go, like, yeah, go I ahead. Until he didn't test it, it's, <laughs> it's a disaster. It's a right, right. <laughs> this is this is a pile of junk. It's not working at all. Um, <laughs> So look, real quick before we talk about uh, too much, I just I wanted to highlight something that, that you guys do um, is you do take on a lot of projects that have already been started by someone that's kind of half something in it. Um, so uh, so I mean I bet that is a process in itself to really just kind of deconstruct that untangled mess. Like how did they wire this up? Was it a particular language? Was it JavaScript? Was it you know uh, what 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 is the what's the what's their servers look like if, if, even if they had a server? Um, you know what that looks like. And uh, so I, a lot of I just not to put words in your guys' mouth, but I mean a lot of the cool things that I hear uh, when we're at events and stuff is like how you guys do a good job of deconstructing those things and then you're able to um, to, to take care of it. Um, so what uh, what kinds of events are you guys looking about doing in the future aside from speaker series? Is there any other kind of big events coming up? Um, well, we do events a lot of times over at the Microsoft Galleria store, which I okay. believe, JJ, is that where our friendship first happened? Yeah. yeah. I think so. I think um, so. But yeah, Greg and I spoke there recently. And we just we really, you know, as a Microsoft Gold partner, we really want to embrace that relationship and get out there and support them. And, you know, they've been incredibly supportive of us. Um, they, they've uh, also been with us, too. So, you know, people that hate awesome. on them, they, they shouldn't hate on them too much. Yeah, yeah we're actually starting up a partnership or, or beginning a partnership with Microsoft Azure and getting a lot of our clients up there. Um, right. they've, they've done a lot of great work in, in, in the last year or so to really, you know, get their prices competitive and, and really create a top-notch cloud, cloud service. So we're, we're excited to kind of really make that big part of our, of our business and our client solution. So, yeah, a lot of good stuff with them. Yeah, that's sure. very exciting. We've partnered with Microsoft for over 20 years now. We've been a gold yeah. partner. So we love them. Yeah. And that, and, that, and that's and that's very important to to highlight because there's obviously different levels and you guys are at gold so um, that's that's fantastic. Now this um, next thing, Kevin, sorry, I'm kind of taking this over a little bit. I know. Um, it's okay. What, so what what do you see as the and and this is kind of speaks to the a little bit to the future that I really want to know. But what do you guys see as the biggest challenge to software and hosting managed slash managed services? Like companies that w that do what you do going forward. Hmm. Well, I think one technological thing um, is, is going to be um, the multi kind of. We're in this like entering this like multi device world, whereas like you know your refrigerator has a screen on it, your car has a screen, mm -hmm. and you know like we kind of had this big phase of everything condensed into the smartphone. Now everything is like a specialized device, but it has to. You want it to have everything. 
So I think I think finding creative solutions to, you know, you don't want to have 25 versions of your app or 25 versions of your website or whatever. You know, managing that in one place but still targeting those devices. You know, um, I think that's that's kind of the next push is is making it easy and affordable to to make reach on these on these special devices. You know, you got Fitbits, you got all those you know those smart watches from Samsung. It's 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 reaching out to every size screen. I think that's gonna be a really interesting thing to see. God bless the technology. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so the the other thing uh, on this was, do you see um, do you see you got you guys really having more of a presence in that mobile space because so much stuff is working in mobile, um, meaning that uh, you know it's coming down to consumer like small business focused stuff is kind of moving into more more business. And less this middle ground between like normal like consumer like ooh look a fun little social app <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, and then you know business like there's there's starting to kind of be a gap there um, mm -hmm. so so you you guys uh, you know feel comfortable there uh, ready ready to handle those those challenges of fitting to smaller screens but still people requiring so much more out of their smaller devices. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's finding a way to make it um, uh, affordable to accomplish for a mid-sized business. You've got those these huge you know startups with the big the big VC investment, and they, they can do these these really crazy social platforms. Or you've got you know a huge company that can put out a, a big enterprise level application. But finding something for the middle ground, I think I think uh, you know you've got to find a way to make m making apps you know more more affordable and sustainable and i think i think there's ways to do it you know the browsers are getting better on the mobile devices right. and uh, the devices are getting smarter and, and more powerful uh, so i think i think it's it's eventually you know the division between a mobile website and a mobile app is going to keep getting that line's going to keep getting blurry and blurry and i think that's kind of that sweet spot where everyone can play you know small big you know whatever Love it. I think that sort of embraces who we are. That's why our clients are all over the spectrum. Yeah, right. Small law firms, these huge, powerful conglomerates, and it's like, wow, we really do fit into everybody's world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You guys have, and and you're you're global. You're a global business. You've done uh, work with Reebok, uh, so you know you're you're not afraid to handle any of that stuff, which is fantastic. And you're homegrown. You're you're from St. Louis, and you're you're something positive in St. Louis right now. So that's good. Yeah, that we're rays of that. sunshine, JJ. Yeah, yeah. Beams of light <laughs> coming down from the heavens. Well, guys, it was it was wonderful having you both on. Um, we can't thank you enough for your support, and we can't thank you enough for doing what you do um, uh, in the community, having these speaker events that are free, by the way. Yeah. So. Our listeners need to need to go to these or hit us up. If you can't make it, if you're one of our uh, Konnichiwa in Japan and uh, if you're down in Australia and in the UK and everywhere else that listens to us, uh, if you can't make those, uh, you can always hit me up and I'll uh, give you all the pertinent information because, uh, you know, that's how I roll. But uh, <laughs> So thank you, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, being on the show tonight. And, again, thank you um, to each individual for, for being just awesome people and uh, great to know. There you go. Well, thanks, thanks for having Adrian. us. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. We'll see hey, you on no <laughs> Awesome. Sounds great. All right. Have a wonderful evening. Hey, you too. You Later, too. guys. Bye. Bye. All right. Bye. And that doesn't end the show. No, nope. no, no. No. Nope. We shall have a whole other half to deal with. It's yes. it's now uh, – halftime is over. What was that? It was only a second. I know. It's over. That yep. ends our interview segment of the show uh, that JJ has totally hijacked from Kevin. Yep, um, stole my thunder. Stole your thunder, but you know what? That's okay because that should have given you enough time to read over these news articles. Oh yeah, um, we've got some great ones tonight. We have some fantastic ones. So why don't you go ahead and kick us off, sir, with the first news of the week? All right, Best Buy earlier this week. Let's slip a little bit of information. Somebody in control of their uh, website department over at Best Buy accidentally put the Moto 360 smartwatch page on their website live and they gave out all the specifications and even the pricing of the upcoming Moto 360 smartwatch running Android Wear. Now, the Moto 360 was announced quite, you know, quite a few months ago and at Google I.O. Uh, back in June, I believe it was. Maybe it was July, I can't remember. 
Everything is a blur. Everything is a blur. I know, I know. When you've been working as much as me and Kevin have, everything starts to become just kind of glossy. Yeah, so whenever it was announced at Google I.O. that everybody that was in attendance at the conference would be getting a free Moto 360, people have just been chomping at the bit, waiting. When is it going to be released? When is it going to be released? You know, and then everybody else that's not getting one for free, you know, kind of like us, uh, been wanting to know, well, how much is this thing going to cost? When you look at it, it's going to be the first one that has the nice round I know. face. It's going to be the one that's gorgeous next to the one that's not. <laughs> All yeah. right. So it's going to have a lot of people are interested in this, and there's been a lot of yeah. speculation. It's going to be 300. It's going to be 350. How's it charge, et cetera, et cetera? Well, we finally know it's going to cost 250 dollars. Now, we don't know an exact time that it's going to be available, but those that attended Google I.O. got an email recently that said they have to respond by September 5th, I believe it is, mm. if, they, if they want their free smartwatch or not. And I'm sure 100% of people are going to be like, yes, we do. So it's kind of odd that they're even going to say, you know, give people that option. Oh, no, I don't want that. <laughs> no. Yes. Um, yeah. No, that's, you know, uh, I've said before and I'll say it again, I've been waiting for a, a watch that has a design that has wireless charging. Um, and, you know, with having wireless charging and with being able to, uh, you know, get updates and everything through the wireless um you know, radio and, and that kind of thing through Bluetooth. I mean, and that's and that's. I mean, it's it, and and it looks really nice. I mean, some of the pictures we've seen, some of the you know the, on people's wrists and 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 the, just conceptually what people have made on the internet of what this the the watch face would look like, given the fact that it's round and so square. It, it's really it looks like it's high quality. Kev. I mean, it really does. Right. And and Motorola does make some some pretty good stuff. I mean. Right. Uh, people who like the Razer line, the the most recent Razer line, um, you know know what I'm talking about. And even even uh, like you said, you like the uh, Moto um, Moto X a lot. Yeah, so, the Moto X. Yeah. And speaking so. of the Moto X, you know, again on September 4th, Motorola is having their big press announcement for oh, yeah. you know the Moto X Plus One, which is the Moto X successor. They're also going to talk about the next version of the Moto G, which is one of the the best affordably priced uh, prepaid devices that you can get for Android. They're going to have that next one, uh, the Moto 360, of course. And then there's also a fourth item, and there's been a lot of uh, discussion about what this could possibly be uh, because they show it's attached somewhat related to your ear. So whether it's going to be just like a verbal thing or if it's just going to be the kind of a next generation of Bluetooth headsets. Interesting. You know, that you Interesting. see people walking around with. Uh, I mean, Motorola is known for so like maybe Bluetooth headsets. So maybe like Playtronics back in the day, like those. Yeah, you know, the little thing you just plug right into your, you know, clip on. Hopefully, you know, we'll we'll get more on that. Uh, whether or not we'll be able to do a live blog of that, we'll have to see if there's going to be a feed or not. Because Motorola, you need to send us these invites. Ah, right, right. So Motorola, I know you're in-house. listening, Motorola. Frankly, right. I mean, you're like our number one listener. So. Right. Um, so anyway, we'll get the information out to you from the little recap regardless. We'll get that information out to you as soon as yeah, possible. Yeah, absolutely. And um, while we're uh, sharing some, some dates of stuff that are coming up, so we got on September 3rd, Samsung Unpacked event, which some people are saying is the Note 4. Um, yes. Motorola event on September 4th, and possibly September. the... Or what did I say? Uh, you went September 3rd, September 4th, and then also September 9th, Apple event. Apple event. That, that's what I was getting ready to say. I thought I said November. Um, <laughs> that's why I stopped talking. Because I was like, did I say November? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no, um, good. So maybe this uh, goes into your next story a little bit, but I'm thinking it may be like a, a wearable type of... Um, uh, maybe Because I've, I've seen and heard, and this is just me guessing, but I've seen mm-hmm. and heard the possibility of Samsung trying this one-eared Google Glass type scenario thing. Um, that would be kind of neat. It would be different, but, man, I don't know. I mean, Google Glass kind of not 
taking off as much, but then again, you know, who who has fifteen hundred dollars to just drop on that unless you're a no big one. time enthusiast. Yeah. No one. Um yeah. so the uh the next story that that I have, um I just wanted to highlight because a lot of people that listen to podcasts like listening to audiobooks and like uh you know possibly reading. I don't know. But they like listening to audiobooks for the most part, I would think. Yes. And um Whisper Sync is a part of Amazon's Kindle feature. So if you've downloaded the Kindle application for your iOS, Android, or Windows device, um, you're going to automatically know exactly what I'm talking about when I say Kindle. And and that's that thing that's called Whisper Sync that you just kind of see in the bottom of the screen, but you're like, what's this? I don't even know what this is. It says Kindle and then Whisper Stream. What is it? Whisper, wh- uh, Whisper Sync or is it Kindle? I don't know. But what what that does now is you're able to actually because Amazon owns Audible, you're actually able to listen to audiobooks through Audible and pick up where you left off on actual the the Kindle app uh, where you read the books uh, and not lose your place. And I think that that's really, really cool and something unique that you guys might not have known about. Um, so if you want to check that out, uh, we're going to have that link on our site to, to kind of walk you through. I think there's a, um, a little short video uh, that will show off some, uh, some of the cool features. But I like that a lot. And, um, Kevin, I hope that this is what the future looks like, where apps can talk to each other like this a little yeah. bit more. Um, yeah, I think that's, this is awesome. Really, really cool. You know, you're reading along, and you're at page 245, right. and you're at this one section. You're like, oh my gosh, I've got to like head leave for work, and then you get in the car, and then you you know set up your device or whatever it is right there in your car, and you pick up on the audio version right where you left off on the same page, the same spot. Boom, ready to go. My, my biggest question is how that's going to work with abridged audiobooks where you're not getting Ooh. the full book. That's my biggest question and you know, maybe they've addressed that and I just haven't had a chance to, to check that but that's kind of like one of my biggest complaints. If you've got a book, don't abridge it. Don't condense it for <laughs> right. the audio version. Just read the entire thing. It's yeah. okay. It's okay. Yeah. Pay them a little extra money. Let it's what you get paid to do. So just do it. Right. Let them keep reading. Right. But that's just, you know, a couple of guys playing in the bed. Things right. we don't like. Right. So you're up with your next news story. All right. So the next thing, you know, again, builds off what I mentioned earlier. And this was an article out of the St. Louis Biz Journal about wearable tech changing professional sports in St. Louis and nationwide. Now, one of the great device companies to come out of the St. Louis area is called Yearbuds, Y-U-R-B-U-D-S. They are a headphone manufacturer who was recently, I guess they partnered or were purchased by Harman Kardon, which is a very well-known name in the audio space. And basically, they want Eurobuds to be the competitor to, uh, I guess you now call it Apple Beats, Beats, Beats by Apple, Beats by Dre Apple, Apple I don't Beats, know. Beats Apple, I don't know. Yeah, so... Rock, Beats. Th- yeah, so that's pretty exciting. It's exciting, I mean, because Eurobuds are pretty pretty great devices. You know, you just put them in your ear, you see people doing flips and all kinds of stuff and they don't fall out of your ears because of the the special molding and the way that they produce these things. I think this is I think it's pretty cool. So, if you can like get that for for runners and you know, athletes and teams and see how this can all work together. It's it's just great and I'm glad to see your buds is you know, kind of heading, heading this this little program, and not really a program, but just kind of like this movement towards that stuff. You know, I I've always been kind of a little ghetto uh, as far as um, having stuff like RCA and Sony. <laughs> you know, um, nothing that's really awesome um, as far as speakers and all that kind of stuff. And when I got uh, some Bose speakers. I was like, oh my gosh, there's. I mean, you know, it's amazing what kind of technology goes into that. And then the Har- Harman actually partnered up with Toshiba for a little while, and um, they came out with a couple of laptops that had like, you know, their cool, awesome sound version of the best they could do with little laptop speakers. But it sounds pretty good, 
actually. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and, and Harmon, I didn't realize, but is actually a big name. Uh, for people who have more money than me, and um, <laughs> so that was that, that was kind of neat to see. Um, they they are still trying to participate and play in the game against them, and um, I'm I'm still curious to see what's going on with this whole Bose uh, lawsuit against um, uh, Beats thing. I don't, for the noise reduction, I don't know we'll we'll maybe talk about that on another show. But kind of interested to see where that goes. But this is definitely really cool and. Uh, it's a good local story, so uh, thanks for uh, thanks for bringing that one up, Kevin. Absolutely. Right. Now, the next news story that I have is an app called Normal. Now, me and Kevin were doing some searching for some names over the weekend for some stuff, and we'll tell you about what that is exactly. Um, we're we're going to save our biggest news yet. I don't know why I didn't hype that up at the beginning of the show, Kevin. Right. It's the um, big news. The big the teaser. Huge teaser. You have to listen to the end. Um, so it's called Normal. And how hard it is to get a name, especially one that's normal, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> yeah. got to be pretty hard. But they did it. And uh, what this application does, according to according to TechCrunch, is it allows crowdsourced data. So this, I think, is a little bit to the future too. We're really talking to the future on this episode, by the way. Is it allows crowdsourced data to tell you for your iPhone? what applications on your iPhone are eating the most battery and what will happen if you download that application to your device, how much battery it's going to consume. So you can actually see comparison and contrast to what you would have with or without. Now, this is hot. I, I like this a lot. Now, I don't know <laughs> what kind of privacy uh, that you're giving up for this kind of stuff, but... This looks like a really interesting, awesome, original idea uh, that I think is implemented pretty well from what the uh, the pictures look like and everything. Kevin, what do you have to say about this? Yeah, looking at the screenshots from the, the article that you posted, this is, looks really cool. Right now it looks like it's going to be an iOS thing, so hopefully you know, Android and Windows Phone can get some, some love here with, with this service too, you know, where it gives you the opportunity to... You know, kill apps. You know, there's always been ways that you can kind of like stop apps from running in the background. This looks like it's going to take it to another another level, just because you know battery life on devices is at a premium. It's it's precious to be able to you know take the phone off the charger at 5 a.m. and my like, gosh, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I got to plug it back in so I can you right. know, drive home and blah. Mm -hmm. You know, people want their devices to last them as long as possible. Slowly but surely, battery technology is getting better, so battery life is getting better. Uh, the LG G2, G3, for example, the Lumia 1520s that we use, for example, are outstanding for, for battery life. Motorola does a killer job with uh, squeezing out battery life out of their devices. So maybe with and, these apps and right here... Slim, and in a slim profile, too, for yes. the last two, th two phones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, not making them real big and thick and everything. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, uh, you know, services like this will work, work properly, and not affect getting notifications that you feel are important to you. Right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, as soon as you know, we get our hands on an, an iPhone, I would love to try this out. I think we'll uh, let Alejandro uh, handle Alejandro! this for now, <laughs> since our man's got a got him an iPhone. He's had for a That's while. Right. Yeah. So he gets that straightened away. He's, Having some reception issues, I think, with it with the signal and stuff, but right. it'll get it squared away, I'm sure. Kevin, yeah. you're up with your next news story. All right, so the oh crap, next... we 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 skipped something. Sorry. Skipped. Um, so, so go to stltechtalk.com, um, please. I mean, at this point, why why haven't you? If you've listened to the show, uh, go to our YouTube channel, watch the Lumia 635 hands-on review. It's awesome because I did it, and um, <laughs> and I put it up. Uh, just to let you know, AT and T right now, and and through the Microsoft Store, you can do this too. AT and T is running a deal on a combination for the Fitbit and the Lumia six thirty five. Now, Kevin has a Fitbit. Right here, right here, right there. Woo I, that's what I was waiting for. I was like, if you're not wearing it, I, I want it back. Oh, no. it's on. Um, so uh, you can get this uh, for under one hundred and fifty bucks. So go check out that deal. It's a it's a nice bundle, and uh, it's good for uh, the young, the old, and the in between. Doesn't matter. I, I I think this phone and Kevin we we had talked about this offline was 
Uh, it's really well made, even though it's very sim simplistic. But it's yes. it's still out of all the simplicity of phones that you can choose from. I think this is the the best one. I don't know if that was a backhanded comment or not, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you're up with your next news story. Yeah, so that's really a great price when you factor in the Fitbit Flex costs a hundred dollars, the Lumia six thirty five hundred dollars. So two hundred dollars, say fifty bucks. It's a pretty Boom. good price if you're looking for a nice, nice smartphone for a teenager and you want a Fitbit for yourself. There, that's a good way to save some money. Yeah. All right. So the next thing that I want to talk about is Verizon Wireless is offering a single line of service with unlimited talk and text with two gigabytes of data for sixty dollars. Now, also for a limited amount of time that's not on here, they are giving away an extra one gig of data. Not entirely sure how long that extra gig is available for free. <laughs> right. But okay. that option is out there. So, yeah, you could have three gig of data, limited talk, unlimited text on Verizon's 4G LTE network for $60 a month before taxes, of course. Hmm. So, deal. my question, okay, so first off, Verizon has had their run on STL Tech Talk today because we've had two of their posts up. Um, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, got a, I got a question. Can you do Wi-Fi... Can you can you set your phone as a Wi-Fi hotspot on this plan? Do we know? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me look for sure because I would like to say so, and I would be very disappointed if you can't, because that's one of the pluses of AT and T right now is that yeah, Wi-Fi hotspot, no problem. Use it as you see fit. And let me see. Not really seeing it right now, but one other thing I do see, though, that you do need to be aware of is that if you go over your 2 gig allowance, yeah, each additional gig is $15 a month as opposed to 10 like with AT&T. And also, if you're using the Verizon Edge service where you kind of like, you know, spread out the payments of your phone and so you can update quicker, you can get that monthly access for only $50 a line. So that's a real... Good deal right there. Nice, nice. Okay, yeah, we'll 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 look that up and um, we'll try to have that question answered. Yeah, because I'm not I'm just I'm not seeing it. I'm I looking at VerizonWireless.com right now. Just yeah. not seeing it at the moment. Yeah, I'd be real okay. disappointed if they don't though. All right, all right. So uh, that's cool. I mean, you know, obviously, um, you know, competition in the wireless space is good for us consumers, and. Um, we appreciate uh, everything Verizon's done for us and will continue to do in the future. In fact, I better get my hands on an HTC One Windows version. That would be awesome because Verizon. Uh, possibly I know you're the end of the week. Yep. Uh, I know you're listening too. Um, so Microsoft turns your camera into a mini Connect. Here's why this is cool because they're not the only ones, and this isn't a Microsoft podcast. Because uh, I just talked about WhisperSync and that was Amazon, and I talked about iPhone and that was on iPhone. So. Give me a break, all right? So uh, on connect, so so right now, uh, Google has the same kind of a, a similar project, but what that this does is it turns your you can turn a camera, a normal webcam or another uh, a camera on a phone, um, theoretically, into a connect where you can put your hand. Uh, for those uh, listening to the audio version, you can't see this at all, but uh, the video version can see my hand going in and out. Essentially, what I'm doing is, is I'm I'm grasping at the air, and that is a that would be me a simulation of going through applications on my phone. Now, where where and how I see this as a benefit is right now, Connect is for the Xbox One, and a similar device is on the a PlayStation, uh, but. There are so many different use case scenarios, and, I'm, and, and believe me when I say this, I'm not lying when I say there are things you would never even think of as use case scenarios for having this capability at your disposal. Uh, they, retailers actually have uh, Connect devices on uh, basically a screen that's in front of you, so uh, if you were to go and try on a shirt, you don't actually have to try on the shirt. It'll digitally project the shirt on you. Um, so like looking in a mirror or whatever. Like looking in a mirror, yeah. So that's really awesome. And when you think about the possibilities here, it's it feels endless, and that's what's amazing. And 
going through your apps and stuff, and yeah, maybe doing that over your phone doesn't sound hot, but what if you were trying to do a whole bunch of stuff and you didn't want to touch your phone because, you know, maybe you're working on on something, you know, maybe you're 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 into something and you just want to. You're you know, eating some cheese fries or something. You got grease yeah. on your fingers. Yeah, exactly. If you're you know eating Cheetos, what was the? I can't remember the blue blue collar comedy thing. And, oh yeah. And, and being bad chair. Being but, bad um, chair and cheese. Yeah, that, that's it. So I mean, there's a lot of <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of really cool things. Uh, so Kevin. What do you have to say other than Cheetos, sir? What do you have to other say? Other than this? Cheetos, yeah. No, I th I think it's really cool. I remember Bill Fink talking about this during one of his sessions at KCDC. I sat in on a little bit of it when he was talking about the Connect for Windows, the new version of Connect for Windows, mm -hmm. and talk about that you know that same example. You know, you go to a uh, a clothing store, you shop, and you don't like trying on clothes. I I don't it I don't like trying on stuff. I get what I feel is gonna fit. And I'm, we're guys. We hate that stuff. You know. You I mean, if you to... like that stuff, that doesn't mean you're not a guy. I'm just saying that the majority of guys are just like, God, shopping is so not me. Yeah. So this way, instead of having to go over, hold it up, trying to see how it fits, and you're like, well, I can't really see how it will look on me. You know, you just simply tap on, you know, whatever the the mirror, the screen, whatever it is, and you can get that image. You know, that shirt kind of like to project to you, change different colors, you know, whether it matches with shoes, et cetera, et cetera. All you ladies, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the, the right shirt, the right pants that have got to go with the shoes, and everything's got to match and coordinate everything. That's right. Everything's got to be just right, just right. And you got to accessorize. Don't forget about accessories. You can accessories. <laughs> right. It's huge. With everything, whether it's smartphones, clothing, mm, yeah, yeah, it's all yeah, the same. Yeah, it's all the no, same. But, but I mean, that's just that's just one example. There's, there's yeah, you some know, really cool things coming down the line. What I wanted to also just kind of comment on was the medical uses, right? So, say if you go into a hospital, you can, you can imagine um, uh, computers um, and 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 things like Connect or Connect to, to so if you're a Microsoft hater, or whatever, but Google, um, at, you know. Uh, Apple, whatever. If if you have, if you walk in and by your body, the movements on your body, like um, I, I have elderly uh, members of the family, and um, you know, reducing their wait times in hospitals because they can diagnose you as you're walking in the door. They can tell if, if maybe if your, you know, your hips uh, you messed up or your alignments off or just whatever the case may be. Is there's so many medical applications for this stuff too. Um, and rehabilitation. I mean, just think about that uh, alone is, yeah. is is really amazing. Yeah. So, just like, imagine being in a, a rehab facility at a hospital or whatever. You're in for mm -hmm. physical therapy, and it's just, you know, the doctor just wants you to walk. You know, just walk this walk this line. You know, as a standard walk, and this camera is, you know, recording your mo your motion movements. And he's like. Okay, the way that you're walking right now kind of leads me to believe that the pain is, you know, in a certain area. Right. If you keep doing that, it's going to cause injury to this area, part of your body, and this is how we can kind of like correct that and get to the bottom of what's really causing your pain and your issues. Right. So there's a lot of great case scenarios for this. Yep. So we'll just wait and see what comes down, and I can't wait to be there when it does. I know I'm. I, I'm. I'm gonna love uh, every minute of it, uh, and we're gonna hopefully there'll be some um, local stories that we can talk about. Um, th now there is kind of a local story. I'm sorry, I'm going off script a little bit. If you blow into this machine, apparently you can determine this machine can determine if you have a viral infection or if you have a um, bacterial infection. Yeah, um, that's, that's big for doctors, whether they need to know I mean, treatment. come on, right? That's like the coolest thing since, you know, I don't know, curing polio. I don't know. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. So uh, the different, obviously, technology and, and stuff like that is going to be really hot going forward. Again, guys, thank you so much, guys and gals. Thank you so much for your participation on STL Tech Talk. Go to stltechtalk.com. Uh, go to the show notes. We actually have some extra reading for you guys. Uh, that maybe stories we don't necessarily get to during the show that uh, we kind of say get prioritized and they kind of fall down, but they're definitely worth taking a look at. Also, go to the bottom of your sc the screen when you're on stltechtalk.com and sign up for push-ups. It's a social app integration uh, on our website that allows for you to share uh, photos, for you to comment, 
um, and 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 be a part of a bigger community and not it's like it, like forums just amplified big time. You can share stuff on Facebook. It's just it's really awesome. So I I I, I tell you it's it's really cool. Go check it out. Made by our our good friends uh, put by pushups. Uh, Dan Loman and everybody down there, Abby and, and everybody, um, and I, all the names that I always suck at trying to remember. Thank you for your uh, support. Um, we really appreciate that. So go to the site and check that out. Definitely, definitely. This push-ups is really cool. You know, building the community. You know, each day we're getting multiple people signing up, joining our community, and it's just really cool to be able to have more people to interact with on a consistent basis and. Not have to. Okay, well, this was posted, shared on Facebook, so you got to go to Facebook. No, you can just see everything like right there. You don't have to worry about it. You're just all right there with a bunch of people with similar interests, just looking to have great conversations. Absolutely. And um, this ends our normal news segment of the show. So thank you all for participating. Um, uh, Daryl, uh, the the Wind fan, uh, you know Kyle and Sean and everybody that uh, listens to this. Thank you so much for. Uh, contacting me and, and, and uh, all of us um, participating in a large community. Um, I really, me and Kevin, really appreciate it. Uh, and thank you to uh, everybody who is uh, making our lives awesome. Uh, also, I just want to give you an update that the Unidev Speaker Series is uh, on the 28th. Uh, so that's on a Thursday. Uh, so it's Thursday evening, the 28th. That's next week. Yes. Um, that uh, also uh, transitioning into the last part of our show and our big announcement. Um, charities you should all know about. Hopeline, a domestic violence prevention and support organization uh, that Verizon supports. Uh, also, the Women's Safe House, Safe Connections, and Schumann Water, which provides water for um, poorer countries. Uh, you know, clean, drinkable water. All you have to do is donate your old shoes, and they're a local St. Louis. Uh, organization, so uh, you can find all of the above and this link on our show notes, so please visit that. And also, Hope for Young Adults with Cancer, and uh, that's hope for yawc.org. Uh, please go and uh, check that out. Um, I'm, you know, if you can, uh, if you can donate to a good cause, you should. So that is our charities you should know about. Now let's get to our application picks of the week. I'll go first. Guess what it's going to be, Kevin? What's it going to be, JJ? <laughs> it's going to be push-ups. Go to awesome. our site. And they're going to be coming out with a iOS application and subsequent uh, other releases, um, I'm sure, on other operating systems. But uh, go to the website. Go to push-ups. Sign up. It's not. It's it's not going to be any skin off your back. It's just. It's it's awesome. Uh, it's going to be shirts on your back, not off. So, uh, go go check that out, Kevin. Why don't you tell us about what some people are calling uh, just a, a weird, completely out of the blue application? Yeah, I I don't know about you, and I don't know about any of our listeners, but I know for one, I did not see this coming. Anyway, you know, renowned actor Tom Hanks has been involved with the creation of an iOS app. Now, Alejandro Ramirez, contributor to the site and developer of our Windows 8 application, has Go written download article, today. Yes, has written an article on our on our website talking about this. It's called Tom Hanks Hanks Writer and it's H A N X Writer. So what what this application is it is a keyboard. It's free with in-app purchases on the i, you know, the iTunes store. And basically, what it is, is it makes your, you know, your virtual keyboard or your, you know, typing on an iPad. It has the sounds, the movements, the visuals of of like you're typing on an old school typewriter. Now, many of you listeners, you know, you, you know, you youngins out there don't remember typewriters. But I learned to type on a typewriter Ding. with the you know color the white out strips where you have to correct your mistakes and stuff. I used a lot of those. So that's one reason why I'm so big into details and correct spelling and pronunciation and grammar and all that. It and was no, beat go, into him, guys. It was just beat yes. into him. Yeah. So so head over there and uh, 
you know, do a, do a search for it. You can get it comes preloaded with the Prime Select model for free. You can also try the 707 and the Golden Touch in the app. And each additional typewriter costs $2.99. But there is a writer's block bundle for $4.99, which includes saving multiple documents, text alignment, title page and picture, ribbon colors, background colors, Hank 707, and luxurious <laughs> Hank Golden Touch. So again, Very cool. Yeah, head over to stltechtalk.com and take a look at that. Alejandro's got a video up on YouTube for that. So it, it's, it's pretty interesting to see. Try it out. Um, and also, everyone, if you have a digital voice assistant like Siri, Cortana, or well, I think Siri and Cortana are the only ones who actually call you a name, you should yell your name into the phone and have that digital assistant say it back to you. It's the funniest thing ever. Yes, especially if you have a lot of O's. <laughs> Cortana sounds like she's underwater. It's kind of funny. Actually. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's really great. Um, so thank you all for that section. Announcements. Unidev Speaker Series, Thursday the 28th. We're going to be at Strange Loop Conference. We're going to be at Startup Voodoo. Uh, we're going to be at St. Louis Days of .net. Ba-boom, ba-boom, boom, boom. And Kevin, you know... I have to say, uh, when we, you know, when you started this thing, uh, and now we're becoming so so uh, large uh, as as a, you know, we're growing as a business from small to large. I'll let you, um, oh, because you deserve all, it. You're all too kind. All right. So the big announcement. This is kind of something that we've we've been talking about for a few months, just you know, amongst ourselves. And the team and some other things that a few other people have mentioned. It's like, well, why are you guys doing this, doing that? We're okay. We're starting a brand new show, and we finally came up with the name of it. And it's going to be called the Tech Informist. So we're going to launch this in September. We believe we've got a super rock star of a first guest lined up. We're waiting for confirmation on that. But once you hear the name, you're going to be like, oh, my God, you got that guest for your first show of this new podcast. It's going to blow your mind. Blown. Yes, blown. So STL Tech Talk podcast is not going anywhere. It's going no. to stay right here. Stay right here. But, but here, here's the thing. We're going to transition this show to just talk about nothing but St. Louis technology, whether yep. it's uh, startups, application developers, all the great things that are going on in the world of St. Louis technology. So our guests are going to be St. Louis-based because we've got a lot of people that want to come on this show right now, people. It's unbelievable. It's like, are we going to have to start recording two shows a day <laughs> just yeah. to like, just yeah. like catch up? Yeah, so, it really – it's insane. How many yes. uh, people? Uh, so uh, we want to give them a voice. We want to be able to. Um, so it, it's a win-win for us, you know. I mean, um, we get to talk to these people, uh, these individuals or these groups, and we also, uh, you know, we get to s spread their good fortunes um, right. and uh, and their passions and and all that stuff. And this kind of allows us to be able to be a lot more flexible. Um, and uh, and I think that uh, we definitely need to do that to accommodate um, just good lord, just the stuff yeah. that's going on. on the great our, things going on in St. Louis and then around the country because it's it's tough to fill in 30, 40 minutes of news rundown talk with St. Louis stuff and national stuff. This way, we're going to be able to bring you both. Yes, it's going to be two separate shows, but hey, we all have an extra time for for a podcast. You know, just play it. You know, while you're at work, play it in your car, whichever. Listen yep. to Tech Informist on your drive to work. Listen to STL Tech Talk while you're at work, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. However it I mean, works out on. in your life. You could never get enough Kevin and JJ. You just couldn't. I'm sorry. You can't. And yeah, you could try, but you can't. Yeah, so we're really, really super excited about it. Yep. So uh, spread the word. We've got the, we've got the Twitter. We've got, you know, we'll have the Facebook. We're going to have an entire you know, website, link, and everything, just everything's coming. So right now we're just tying up some few things with uh, some logos, some graphics, stuff like that. But got a lot of work ahead of us in the next two weeks. But we will pull it through. 
Absolutely, cool. and and I couldn't be ex uh, more excited that we're going to do this. So this is just more. So you're going to hear. So if you listen to STL Tech Talk podcast, which you still should, absolutely, mm -hmm. and um and and Codecast and the Tech Informist, um, that's like three days of JJ. I mean, come on, everybody needs that in their life. Everybody um, needs. Everybody wants it. Everybody needs. Everybody wants. Everybody's going to get. Right. So I just wanted to uh, also let our audience know we do media. Uh, we actually have a media division, our STL Tech Media. So if any of you know know of someone or whatever the case may be is that needs photos, videos, guest interviews, um, uh, commercials, whatever the case may be is, uh, headshots, uh, pictures, whatever, um, give us a call or email us. Um, STL Tech Talk at stltechtalk.com, and just be a part be be a be a part of our community because uh, we're we're a great community and uh, we're doing a lot of things here and we want to keep doing those things and in order to do that we need to make money and uh, just buy our stuff that's what it boils down to. Uh, also, we're gonna have a a a place where you can buy. Um, Shot glasses with our titles on it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> mugs all kinds and of various things. Yeah. Cups and shirts and all sorts of stuff. So there's so much awesome coming to our listeners and to the future. So thank you all for being a part of the, the process. Um, Kevin, is there anything that you want to say before we end this wonderful show? Oh, gosh, I'm sure there is. But, man, we got so many things going on that I can't, like, pinpoint one thing. I know. It's running I know. into another hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to wrap it up, and you got some editing work to do. So let's go ahead and uh, let's let's end it, if that's okay. Oh gosh, do we have to? Oh, <laughs> but it's so fun. But hey, pretty soon we're gonna be able to talk all the time. Oh yeah, for sure. Yep. So thank you to our guests, Angela and Pat, and thank you to Unidev for loaning us two awesome people and for their sponsor of the show. We definitely appreciate uh, all of those three things and them. So thank you to all of our fans. We love and thank you for your support of the show. So from the entire STL Tech Talk crew, stay frosty. We're out.